In 2021, Toyota will unveil their new solid state battery technology, and they plan to sell vehicles with these solid state batteries in the early 2020s. Let's examine what we know so far about Toyota's new battery tech, and then do a reality check plus a comparison to Tesla's 4680 battery cells. I'm Jonathan, and welcome to CleanerWatt. When it comes to battery technology and so-called breakthroughs, skepticism is warranted. In years past, many companies have claimed to have made breakthroughs in battery technology, but time has shown that these breakthroughs were not actually commercially viable. Because of this, they never actually saw the light of day. So the question is, as we examine Toyota's claims and their timeline for this new battery tech, does Toyota have a commercially viable solid state battery or is this just more hype and empty promises? First of all, I think it's really important that we talk about the joint partnership between Panasonic and Toyota, this joint venture company that is being used by these two companies to create this new battery tech. According to this press release from Toyota, Panasonic and Toyota established a joint venture and this joint venture is called Prime Planet Energy and Solutions. So through this joint partnership, Panasonic and Toyota are working to develop solid state batteries. And a solid state battery in simple terms is just a battery with a solid electrolyte versus a traditional lithium ion battery which has a liquid electrolyte. These solid state batteries are supposed to promise safer and faster charging batteries with more energy density. However, they commonly have problems with cycle life, cost, and they're really difficult to scale when it comes to manufacturing. So now let's dive into the claims and the facts around this new solid state battery technology that Toyota is developing. According to this news article, Toyota's solid state batteries should be able to add around 500 kilometers in one single charge and that charge will only take around 10 minutes. They also mentioned that this can be done, these very high charge rates can be done with minimal safety concerns. In this article, Toyota also claims that vehicles running with this new technology will have a range more than twice the distance of a vehicle running on conventional lithium ion battery technology. In this video, we're not going to spend a lot of time diving into these claims from Toyota. However, we are going to spend a lot of time talking about the actual viability of this solid state battery. Is Toyota's new solid state battery technology able to be scaled when it comes to manufacturing? Is it cost effective? And does it have a good cycle life? Will the batteries last for a long time? These are the factors that I want to dive into in this video and really determine the viability of Toyota's solid state battery technology. So first of all, I'd like to dive into Toyota's solid state battery technology and use claims from them and see how long it'll actually take for them to get this battery to market and see how scalable it is in manufacturing. We're going to compare that to Tesla's 4680 battery technology and the claims they've made as well. According to the article that we referenced earlier in the video, quote, Toyota plans to be the first company to sell an electric vehicle equipped with a solid state battery in the early 2020s the world's largest automaker will unveil a prototype next year. So if this article was all the information that you had, it might appear like Toyota's on the verge and they have a very good solid working battery that they're going to unveil in 2021. However, an article that was published earlier this year sheds better light on this topic. In July of this year, Car and Driver put out an article entitled Toyota's Quick Charging Solid State Battery Coming in 2025. This article mentioned that Toyota once again was partnering with Panasonic and that they would have limited production in 2025, but don't expect them on your Toyota vehicle that soon. The reason that Car and Driver made this conclusion about this battery technology was because of the safety and durability issues that Toyota is still having with their solid state batteries. As they said, quote, it has yet to harness the true potential of a solid state battery. Also when it comes to how scalable this technology is, quote, on the manufacturing end, Kata said that because the cells need to be produced in an ultra dry environment, the automaker is currently producing the cells in compact booths. Workers reach in to work on the cells through sealed rubber gloves. That doesn't lend itself to large scale manufacturing. 
So when you find out the true details about Toyota's battery tech, it becomes very clear that they really are still working on the battery. It still has a lot of issues to work out, safety and durability issues. And it's currently not scalable when it comes to manufacturing. So it's really not a very viable battery technology yet. So to summarize this timeline from Toyota, here's a chart showing their basic timeline for the next decade for this new battery technology. In 2021, they're going to unveil a prototype. But as that article pointed out, they still have issues with the durability and the safety of this battery. So between the years 2021 and 2025, they're going to be improving this technology. The article pointed out that they should have limited production in 2025. And I'm estimating that maybe some kind of scalable manufacturing could happen by around 2030. Tesla, on the other hand, already has a pilot line for their 4680 batteries in Fremont, California. And this pilot line at full capacity is capable of around 10 gigawatt hours of capacity created per year. And when it comes to estimating the future production of these 4680 batteries, this recent Electrek article quoted Elon Musk speaking about Gigafactory Berlin and the battery production of that factory, saying that it will be capable of over 100 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, and possibly over time, it will be going over 200 to 250 gigawatt hours. Also at Battery Day, Tesla unveiled that they hope to be producing around 100 gigawatt hours in 2022. So while Toyota is improving their solid state battery technology, Tesla will be producing 100 plus gigawatt hours of these new 4680 batteries. Also at Battery Day, they unveiled that by 2030, they hope to be making three terawatt hours of batteries per year. So by around 2030, when Toyota is just starting to figure out how to manufacture their solid state batteries at scale, I believe Tesla will be somewhere around that three terawatt hours of batteries produced per year. So really the point of that comparison is not to put down what Toyota and Panasonic are doing with the solid state battery that they're developing. It's just to show the reality of the situation that Toyota's solid state battery technology is still somewhat in the future and it will not be produced at scale for some years yet. However, Tesla is solving the problem now with a very viable battery technology, the 4680 battery cell, which solves many of the problems that batteries have had in the past. The second factor that I'd like to dive into is the battery cost between Toyota and Tesla. According to that car and driver article that we've mentioned already, these batteries, talking about Panasonic and Toyota's solid state batteries, will be expensive. Now when they say they will be expensive, that obviously means it's going to be more expensive than current battery tech. So imagine a vehicle, an electric vehicle, that's already more expensive than a gas burning vehicle with the same kind of specs. So if you think about maybe a forty dollars or $50,000 electric vehicle comparing to a twenty-five dollars or $30,000 gas burning vehicle, and then increase the price of the battery tech in that vehicle, you don't really have a viable vehicle at that point. We need to bring battery cost down, not increase battery cost. And that's exactly what Tesla is doing. At Battery Day, they put out this chart, and I added some numbers for context based on some comments from Elon Musk, and I estimate that Tesla's current battery tech can be produced for around $100 per kilowatt hour. At Battery Day, they laid out plans to reduce that by about 56%. And so by around 2025, I estimate that Tesla's batteries, the 4680 batteries, will be able to be made for around $50 or less per kilowatt hour. So going back to that chart that we showed earlier, when Toyota in 2025 should be producing limited production of their batteries, which will still be very expensive, Tesla will be producing most likely these 4680 batteries, which have great characteristics at somewhere around half the cost of current battery tech, and Toyota's will be really expensive tech, and it really won't be viable for any kind of mass production. The third element of comparison I'd like to make and dive into is the cycle life of Toyota's batteries versus Tesla's batteries. Also, once again, according to this Car and Driver article quote, the company has a working prototype. However, because of safety and durability issues, it has yet to harness the true potential of a solid state battery. One of the biggest issues with solid state batteries is their short lifespan. They tend to fail after repeated charging. 
Still, Toyota needs to figure out how to create an electrolyte that won't become deformed by simply charging and discharging the battery, leading to pack failure. So really the translation of all that is that Toyota's current battery technology, their solid state battery technology, is not able to withstand very many charges. It doesn't have very good cycle life and thus it wouldn't be very good yet to put into a vehicle. Now I do believe that Panasonic and Toyota will figure it out. They both have a lot of cash to put towards this. And according to this article that we referenced earlier, the government, the Japanese government, is putting together a fund of around 2 trillion yen which equals around 19.2 billion US dollars to support decarbonization technology. So if Panasonic and Toyota are able to take advantage of some of this cash from the Japanese government, this could help speed along the process of this new technology. So while Toyota's solid state battery technology still has issues with cycle life, Tesla's battery technology, their current battery technology even, is doing very well. Here's a chart that Tesla put in their 2019 impact report and they showed the battery capacity retention after around 200,000 miles. And remember this is for the 18650 cells, this is for older battery technology than their current 2170 and definitely older than their 4680 cells. When it comes to the 2170 battery cells found in the Model 3 and Model Y, they should be good for around 300,000 to 500,000 miles or around 1500 cycles. So Tesla's current battery tech has a very good long life and there's not really much of an issue there. Toyota and Panasonic's solid state batteries have an issue with cycle life that I believe they'll eventually work out, but they're not ready for prime time. So once again, the point of this comparison is just to show a reality check that this technology, the solid state battery technology from Toyota is not as far along as that initial article made it seem like. So in conclusion, Tesla has unveiled a battery, the 4680 battery, that will charge faster than their current battery tech and have greater energy density for around half the cost of current battery technology. And these batteries can be manufactured at serious scale. Toyota, on the other hand, who doesn't really seem focused on EVs or doesn't really seem to want to make them, has a prototype battery that could see limited production in 2025, but will still be expensive to manufacture. When you compare the reality of these two competing technologies, it becomes clear that Tesla has the logical solution that works now. Tesla has created a real breakthrough that is commercially viable and it's being made now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I also wanted to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and the rest of the supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up and find out how you can support my work here on YouTube, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.